With over 25 years of experience with this technology, Tire Pressure Control International Limited is pleased to present to you this world-class system. Tire Boss 2 is the most advanced yet simple to operate tire pressure control system in the world. Tire Boss 2 enables you to match the appropriate tire pressure to the load and speed of the vehicle at the push of a button. When you reduce your speed or reduce your load or both, you have the ability to safely reduce tire pressure with dramatic results to your operations. This matching of the tire pressure to the load and the speed throughout the haul cycle has proven to enhance tire life in all applications and also reduce vibration related damage to the vehicle. Correct operation from you, the professional driver, is imperative in order to realize the significant benefits the system will provide, including incredible traction and mobility, low ground pressure providing a very soft footprint with reduced rutting. Correct operation means deflating prior to going off-road to maximize the results. Do not wait until you have made deep ruts or managed to get stuck prior to deflating. Here is a snapshot of the results when Tire Boss is used correctly. The operator control unit turns on with the vehicle ignition, and we will refer to this as the OCU. There is an on-off switch on the underside edge of the operator control unit. Right here. The controller must always be left on when operating the vehicle. The OCU goes through a startup sequence with various information, including the option to select and view this training video. by selecting this icon. Pressing the video icon will take you to this training video and it can also be found under the settings icon on the main screen. The video cannot be viewed while the vehicle is moving. To jump ahead through the startup screens, simply press the forward icon button and it'll take you to the home operating screen. This main operating screen identifies these important items. The number of tire groups controlled, in this case, just the drive only, or it could show you the steer and drive or steer, drive and trailer. We can control up to four different groups of tires at the same time. The current tire pressure status for each tire group is indicated by the number between the tire tread prints right here. The target pressure and the setting name is identified at the lower portion of the box. Changes to these pre-programmed settings are simply made by selecting the up and down arrows on the right side of the controller. This will scroll through the various settings programmed. The name for each setting and the corresponding speed limit, if there is one, flash momentarily until the setting activates. This allows you to scroll through the settings to the one you want and after a short delay, it will automatically activate that setting. Active changes in pressure are indicated by the flashing up or down arrow on the screen. Once the target pressures are reached, the flashing arrows disappear. In addition to scrolling up and down through the settings, the emergency traction setting is available at the push of the button on the lower icon on the left side of the controller. This icon gives you direct access to emergency traction, so you don't have to scroll through settings to get to it. This is typically a lower setting used for a short time period at a very slow speed providing a further reduction of tire pressure for enhanced traction and flotation. For example, five PSI lower for a five minute time period, after which it will automatically jump to the appropriate setting. The remaining time in the emergency traction setting is displayed at the center of the screen. If the time has run out, the emergency traction mode can simply be reselected again. Please note that changes in tire pressures take place while the vehicle is in motion. This applies to both inflate and deflate changes. The inflate times are much quicker when the vehicle is in motion than when still given the engine RPM and turbo boost increasing compressor output. For vehicles equipped with load sensing, it will automatically display only the settings available for that condition. For example, loaded pressures will be different than unloaded pressures. This shift between loaded and empty happens automatically without your input required. These icons here with the weight indicated that we're in a loaded situation. 
When the vehicle is empty, those icons will disappear. The dim bright control for the screen allows for three levels of brightness simply by pushing the button repeatedly at the top right hand corner. When any alarms are active, they are displayed on the top center of the screen, replacing the Tire Boss 2 logo. We will now simulate the catastrophic tire pressure loss situation by pulling off an external line at the drive wheels. This simulates any major tire pressure loss where the vehicle air compressor cannot keep up with the loss of air in the tire system. Tire pressure loss, stop vehicle now. Alarm is displayed when there is a catastrophic loss in tire pressure. Again, if the system is inflating and the actual pressure drops for any reason, the alert will come on. If any type of catastrophic loss takes place, you must close each individual tire wheel ball valve. And you have to do it on each set of wheels in the tire group to isolate air loss and then rectify the problem. If this alarm is activated, you must stop the vehicle as soon as it is safe to do so and close the manual wheel end valves at each tire hose and then determine the corrective action. Low brake air pressure system in standby is an alarm displayed if the truck air brake pressure is reduced. The tire boss system then goes on standby until the truck brake pressure recovers. Vehicle overspeed alert is activated if the vehicle exceeds the maximum speed limit for a particular setting. If the vehicle speed is not reduced below the setting, the tire boss system will automatically inflate the tires to the appropriate setting after a short period of overspeed. Airflow restriction is an alert that will appear if all the manual wheel end valves are left closed. Always ensure that these are open under normal operating conditions. Airflow restriction on trailer. This alert will appear if all the manual wheel end valves are left closed or if a trailer is disconnected or not equipped with Tire Boss hardware. This alert on the trailer will allow you to choose if the trailer is disconnected. If you choose yes, it will deactivate the trailer until you once again reactivate it by pressing the X in the center of the trailer group and holding it. Various other alarms may display. Please note exactly what they are and report it to your service team. To access language options, simply select the menu icon and then the language icon on this next screen and scroll to the language that you're looking for, in this case Swedish, and push and hold the enter button and it will now switch over to Swedish. There's also the ability to change the units of measure such as miles per hour to kilometers per hour and this is accessed through the same menu icon on the home screen followed by selecting the settings icon, the cogged icon. And this is the units of measure and you can change it here between Celsius and Fahrenheit, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, and the tire pressure unit of measure. The valve control unit, or VCU, controls the inflate and deflate of the tires. That's this whole assembly here. There is an on-off ball valve on the exhaust port of the control valve, giving the driver the ability to close the exhaust port in case of a sticking deflate cartridge. This valve is to be open like this under normal operation. The Schrader port located either on the bottom or the side of the valve gives direct access to the tire pressure supply line. All tires in the group can be pressure checked and manually inflated at this point, providing all the wheel end ball valves are open. This control valve has thermostatically controlled heaters that will turn on if needed in temperatures near freezing. Most installations incorporate a protective steel guard over top of the electronics that's mounted on the front side of the control valve. There are individual manual ball valves for each tire. These are to be open under normal operation. They are there for servicing of wheels and if needed in an emergency situation, they can be closed as I have here, but again, open when the vehicle is under normal operation. Automatic valves are built in for each tire that close if tire pressure drops below a preset level. Example, 20 PSI is a safeguard to ensure the tires never go right flat. 
That's what these are. These are the automatic valves built into this assembly that individually close off the supply to each tire at a low set point. There are various configurations of these wheel end valves, either built into wheel disc assemblies as these are, or individually mounted as required. There is a Schrader stem, as you see here, that allows for individual tire pressure testing or tire filling. So this Schrader fills this hose, this Schrader fills this hose and also acts as a set point. If these wheel end valves close off at 20 PSI, they need supply air pressure again in order to reopen. This is the wheel end valve that isolates each tire individually and this one of course not built into a hub, it's individually mounted. It still has a Schrader valve, a Schrader port in order to supply air to a tire or check an individual tire pressure. Please note there are no valve cores in the valve stems as air must pass both ways for tire inflate and deflate. Ensure that valve cores are never installed when servicing tires. In off-road applications, it is important that the inner wheel hose connection to the valve stem is covered by the protective sleeve slid right to the base of the valve stem. This is often missed on tire servicing and leaves the valve stem at risk of breakage when off-road. When the wheel hoses are attached to the valve stems on the outer wheel, we position this valve stem so it's not protruding between the duals where it normally is. We've turned it to the inside. So none of this hardware is sticking down between the dual wheels for protection of the hose and the fittings. For those of you that use tire chains, simply turn the fitting at the drop lines out slightly to provide more clearance to the tire in here, ensuring that there is clearance for the chains. Remember that you must be at your maximum tire pressure setting when the chains are installed to ensure that the sidewalls cannot touch each other with the chains in between the wheels. So this is a trailer wheel without the automatic wheel end valves. It's simply got the manual valves which are in the closed position here and they should always be open for normal operation as it would be in that position. We suggest for long periods of parking to actually close these wheel valves. On installation, we put these Teflon pads in here for the hoses to touch against the rim to protect any abrasion to the aluminum rim from the hose. This is a typical connection for the tire boss system supplying the trailer from the tractor unit. It's simply a quick coupler and for connection, the coupler from the tractor supply plugs into it and locks in. When this is removed, the air is checked in the trailer and this connection here is mounted on the tractor itself so that this can be plugged in and stop the airflow on the whip line. Thank you for being a Tire Boss user. We welcome your feedback and any questions you may have. For further information or support, please contact us via email at info at tireboss.com or toll free in North America at 1-888-338-3587.